Animation, baby. Hello, my name is Mike Scott. I'm going to be talking today about using Photoshop in conjunction with Anime Studio to get an 8-bit or 16-bit pixelized look. I've done it for a few projects before and just through trial and error I found a few best practices to get the right kind of look. There's a few technical steps we want to get right to get the blocks looking crisp and not malformed. Um, so let's have a look at that. So the first thing we're going to do is make a new Photoshop document. I've got Photoshop open here and uh, because we're working at a pixel resolution I use 226 by 127 with normal square pixels and this scales up to about 1080p HD size or 720. So you can see it's about the same size as an HD aspect ratio. Um, then we're going to get, if you click and hold on your brush tool, it's normally on brush, you can get a pencil tool and then bring your brush size right down to one, sorry, your pencil size right down to one pixel. And now we're drawing at the pixel resolution with a one pixel brush. Pretty crazy. I'm going to create a new layer here. Dope. And we're going to do like a dancing guy. So I'm just going to get a blue color and do a rough. So the first frame, he can be like this. Um, second frame, he can be up. I just find it helps to rough stuff in first. And then the third frame is going to be a reverse of this blue frame. Yeah. Okay. Let's create another layer and bring the opacity of this down so we can draw on top of it. And I'm going to get a couple ways to do pixel art and it is quite time consuming. So I'm actually going to scale this down just so it goes a bit quicker. I've just pressed uh, Command T and I'm just going to scale scale is down a bit so the whole thing goes a bit quicker. So we've got a smaller size. I'm going to press D to get a black brush and then B to go back to my brush or pencil. So I'm just going to draw. Actually making pixel art is a whole different um, topic but my focus today is just um, more the technical aspect of uh, getting it to look alright in Anime Studio. Just take note of these settings for my fill tool. Tolerance is zero and anti-alias is definitely off. color instead of black inside. Cool. That's the one frame. I'm just going to duplicate this and move it off to the side. So I've got three frames here. Three frames. And the way we test them out in Photoshop is we open the animation timeline. Uh, I think Nearly all versions, at least recent versions of Photoshop have it. So if we go Window, Timeline, 
you may have, you may find cut down versions of uh of photoshop don't have it um but if you do have it this is a really good way to test out animations and if you click create video timeline and then um click that little button that converts to frame animation let's go click on forever and set the the speed to 0.2 seconds we create a new frame and then show this frame create a new frame show this uh not frame layer and then create a new frame and show this layer and if we press spacebar it lets us preview the kind of animation we're making so for pixel animations this little timeline window is invaluable it does take some getting used to especially when you start moving things around on frame one it can throw things off if you've moved um, if you've moved layers around uh, so that's a whole separate section but that's looking all right for now um, so we're going to leave it at that so we got our photoshop document we got our layers and working in a pixel animation um, and we're going to rename them here so i'm going to call it d1 d2 and d3 and then D4, which or frame 4, is a repeat of um, the up frame, which is D2. So we just need three frames for this. All right. I'm just going to save this quick. And let's call it Dance. Now, you might think, okay, I've got my animation. I can bring it into Anime Studio in a Photoshop format. But pixel art and Photoshop documents don't work too well in Anime Studio because it's such low resolutions and we require things to match up really precisely in this pixel grid. For some reason, if we brought this Photoshop document into Anime Studio, especially if there were layers stacked on top of each other that you wanted to be accurate, the layers shift around slightly in Anime Studio, and when it's so small increments in the pixel style, it really looks very messy. So the way to do it, and I've tested quite a number of ways, this is the way I find most accurate. If we go... Oh, and one other thing. If you've put into groups things like... Um, you've put dance, and you've got another layer for, I don't know, clouds or something... And these are on their own other layers. If if you got things in groups before you run the script that I'm about to show you, you've got to take everything out of the groups and just have only layers present. For some reason, it messes the script up, and you end up getting individual layers merged with other layers. That's not what we want. And I'm going to remove this background layer. So these are only the layers we want of the dancing animation. We're going to go file scripts export layers to files and let's make a little folder dance png files All right if you've uh, selected um only the layers you want so if you've got like a whole bunch of of layers and you only and you only want to export a few then you can export visible layers only but because we've only got three and i've only got the one visible we're going to leave this unchecked and now png 24 is what we want that's going to give us transparency you can leave this icc profile checked we do want transparency in the files interlaced we're not worrying about and the important thing that can throw you off is this really uh, is quite important to uncheck this trim layers. If you do trim your layers, um, it can throw things off uh, when you render the layer. Because the layer bounds are so close to your image, in the pixel resolution, it often cuts off a pixel on the bottom of your layer. So we don't want that. We want space around the layers to the size of the document. It's just the way Anime Studio's render engine works, I guess. And you could put a prefix if we want. So let's call it dance. Let's run that. 
and it's going to spit out our layers as PNGs. And we can just check that if I go temp dance PNG files. I'm just pressing spacebar to preview. That looks pretty good. That's what we want. So let us now open Anime Studio. First thing we're going to do is set the project directory, uh, project size to the same as our Photoshop document. I've got it set already because I've just recently completed a pixel project and the scenes were 226 by 127. Frame rate can be whatever you want, but it's important that this is the right size because if we set it to something else, the images are going to import smaller than the screen and I want them to match the screen size exactly. So 226, whoopsie. Okay, the next thing is we want to check our preferences and definitely have nearest neighbor sampling for new images checked, image layers. Nearest neighbor is different to bilinear or bicubic interpolation and that photo, you, you don't want Anime Studio to look at a really tiny pixel image and try and make it smooth by blending the pixels together, which is what you may want on other projects. But for this, we want each pixel to be represented as clearly as it can be. So nearest neighbor is what that does. Okay, so check that. Now we're going to import the images we made. So let's go File, Import, Image. And let's choose our dance PNG files and I want to select them in order. So one, two, and three. In fact, this is just the real like uh, best practices thing. But the image you select first is going to be at the bottom of the stack. So for really large scene files when you've got loads of images and you want them imported in, in order, from what I remember, you select the last image first, and then and then the first one. Yeah, there's three at the bottom, two in the middle, and one at the top. And they've all imported correctly to the right size. You can see the layer bounds here is exactly the same as the project setting, which is great. And each file isn't cropped to the edges of the image. It's the same size as, as the project, so it's all in place, and that's what we want. So let's go ahead and, and animate our dance. I'm just going to make this like a three-second animation. And we're going to select a switch layer and call it dance. And let's select these images and bring them into the switch layer for pixel stuff, for frame-by-frame frame animation. I use switch layers a lot. So on the first frame, we're going to select the, the dance one image, and then one, two, three, four frames later, select the second one, one, two, three, four, third one, one, two, three, four, and then back to the first one, uh, the second one, and then we're going to copy the first frame. So if I scrub through the timeline, that's what he does. And I'm going to loop this by right-clicking and clicking on Cycle, We'll cycle it back to frame two. So that's what this guy is doing. He is making a dance. If I render this layer, you can't really see at the small size that it's clear. But if I pumped up the resolution to 1080p and rendered, that looks pretty good. Okay, cool. Well, we're almost done, but let's say we want to go and add a background now. So, I'm going to draw a really quick background. Awesome. I uncheck the dance layer, so I've just got the background. And instead of running the script for a single layer, I can go save for web. And I'm going to save it as a PNG24. That all looks good. And I'm going to save it in 
my Dawn's PNG files is background. So I'm gonna import the image now and you're gonna see what's gonna happen. Oh, it's so tiny. How did this happen? This is kind of like a general anime studio uh, issue that I used to run into a lot and used to drive me crazy. Then I spent ages trying to resize it properly and get it just matching fine. But for pixel stuff, that can be a bit finicky. So instead of doing that, I'm going to delete this background. It's because the project settings we changed. Anything you import is... Um, going to look at those project settings, at least raster images, going to look at those project settings and the size is going to change accordingly. So let's set it back to how it was, 226 by 127 and re-import that image. That's much better. So now we can upscale it to 1080p. And if I render that, that's good to go. We could now do other things like um, if I wanted to move this dancer around, I could put him in a in, in a in a group. Let's put the first frame here, and by the end of the animation, he's going to move to the end of the screen. Whoops! Let me just copy that. Yeah. Woo! So that's nice with Anime Studio is that it doesn't conform to that pixel grid. We can move things really precisely and um, it's going to treat this pixel image just as it would any other image. So that's great. Uh, so things aren't snapping to the 226 by 127 pixel grid. And once you're in the Anime Studio engine, I really like it. It's quite fun to move around in. So we want to render this animation. I'm going to go File, Export, and everything here is fine. We could uncheck anti-aliased edges because we want sharp edges, but I have done some tests and I think it's all right to leave everything as it is. If you want um, an alpha channel, if you're just running out character animation, for example, and you're going to comp it later onto a background, we could check that. But otherwise, I think that's fine. Even extra smooth images is alright to leave as it is. We're going to get pretty decent results. So uh, let me export that as dance movie. And PNG is a good codec to use. Uh, it's pretty crisp. We don't need the alpha channel here because there's no transparency. We've got a background. So let's save that. Look at that. So straightforward is that we could even zoom into the image and would still get really crisp um, lines because we selected that nearest neighbor interpolation. So that is how you do it. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.